Access more. Hey, it's the Luscos. <laughs> Here we are. Here we first, are. First ever. Jenny. Our first ever live Hey It's Celesco's podcast pop-up extravaganza. Honestly, this is amazing. So thankful for every single person in this room. And it's our 100th podcast. podcast. episodes! That's a lot. That's a lot of hey. Lesco's. Oh, no! You're going to knock it over the table. We're knocking things over 100 episodes. That's a lot of Lesco's. Did you ever think we would reach episode 100? Well, you know what I think. <laughs> you didn't think we would make it to episode two. I didn't think we, were, we would make it very far at all. You had little faith. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, but really, it is so exciting. And we've dreamt, uh, long dreamt of taking the, the Hey, It's Lusco experience and taking it on the road and bringing it out. So to be here at yeah. the historic Clementine Hall in Nashville, Tennessee, amazing. we're so excited it's with so this amazing. beautiful audience. And this beautiful room. Yep. It's amazing, and we, uh, we're on a series, we're on a kick. Uh, it's the, as, as people are listening to this, it's November 30th. Uh, we made, you made it through Thanksgiving, praise Ooh, God. You weigh 12 job, pounds everything. more, Con- congratulations. <laughs> uh, but, but barreling towards the, the, the holiday season, and in this uh, season of, of Hits of Lusco's, we're talking about a really powerful subject. Yes. And that subject is? Marriage. 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 The obligatory princess bride reference today. and continue. Um, <laughs> but marriage, and we, we believe wholeheartedly that God wants to save the world and he wants to do it through the home. Yes. We yeah. just couldn't have a stronger conviction about that. Yeah. You know, Jesus, Jenny, tells this parable uh, of a man who built his house on rock and another man who built his house on sand. And the man who built his house on rock, flood doesn't destroy it, winds don't take it out, but the guy on sand, there's great was its fall. Mm. And many people believe that Jesus had in his heart, Psalm 128, as he was giving that parable, this idea of what it looks like to be blessed, what Mm. it looks like to fear the Lord. It's having a fruitful vine in the heart of your home, your wife, little olive plants around the table, table. getting to see your children's children. And then notice what happens next. Peace be upon Israel. Uh, Jerusalem's good. You're mm. seeing all your days. So, so really, it started with one man's heart, with one woman's heart, mm. and it ended up with the whole world being blessed. Yeah. Wow. So we like to say that if you want to save the world, then let God save your home. Yes. Build your so house good. on the rock. It'll yep. affect your children's children. That's right. That's so right. We have such a strong conviction about that. Yeah, and we're diving into, in our podcast, and we're in a series of... Um, marriages, really getting to have conversations. Wait, we're in a series of marriages? We're in a series <laughs> no, just the one. of we just stick marriages. With the one. Pick whichever one you want. No, Wait. Um, in a series of messages. That's like Old no. Testament. That's real Old Testament. Well, well, in this series, we're, we're looking at a lot of different marriages. That is so true. <laughs> but all from the safety so, and comfort of one marriage. Yes. yes. But I, what I'm saying is, it's been really cool because we've been learning from so many different couples and That's right. and I love how not one couple is just like the other there's a, there, there's a different personality and calling and tenderness and sweetness and story and and so as we've been able to interview so many different couples we've seen such a beauty and a strength and I've been personally inspired by each couple that we've gotten to talk to and just learning from them and learning through the heartache that they've gone through and the, the struggle and actually seeing that conflict isn't a bad thing. It's actually an opportunity for growth and strength. And I think sometimes we see conflict as horrible, but it's actually good if we can let it bring us to the growth and the strength in our marriage that God has for us. And so it's 100%. been incredible. From Dallas and Amanda Jenkins and talking about how do they keep their marriage, you know, strong while they're also planning the Sermon on the Mount, you know, <laughs> no big deal. Uh, but to Chad and Julia Veach talking about the reality of, and the hard backside of marriage with the daughter with special needs. Mm. And uh, from, from every different couple, I've been encouraged. I've had little things I've taken. And uh, today's episode for our 100th episode of Hey, Let's Goes, we have a very special treat. Yes. And that is the return of Torin Wells. Welcome Torin Wells, everybody. Hey. 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 What up, fam? I say return because that episode 39, bro. 39. Was a real, 39, 39 was fine. 39. I, your podcast is my favorite podcast to be on. 
because you just drop gold the entire time. Well, you so were that's the one why I'm like gold. laid back. I mean, you just did a whole thing about the vine and the heart of God and fruit on the table. I'm like, is it a cornucopia? Thanksgiving? Yeah. It was, you're special. Man. So yes. thank you guys for and having me. In addition to the return of Torrent Wells, uh, which is little Lord of the Ringsy, the return of the king. <laughs> yeah, a little um, much. We also have, for the very first time, we are so pleased to welcome Lorna Wells to the yes. podcast. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Love you guys. Yeah. We love you too. Uh, the Wells, in addition to being podcasters, uh, you guys have Alive and Wells, your podcast, which is yeah. so fun. It's so fun, so you guys. It is you. fun. You it guys do that together. Yes. Uh, how, I mean, you guys, eight episodes strong. Yeah, Four. yeah, we should be Four, about five, that. Six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm thinking, sorry, I'm thinking of The High Note. You have eight episodes yes. in, the, in the previous two seasons of The High Note. Yes, I got High Note stuff, but I'm just trying to think if we're talking about how many episodes out are that are out right now in this moment or when this Ooh. episode comes oh. out. Sneaky sneaks. <laughs> Got some Dropbox files so, going episode on. four, <laughs> as this is being recorded. Okay, gotcha. Awesome. Yes. Okay. okay, my question is where do you guys record? Ooh. We record in Nashville at the Access More Studios. Oh. It's a vibe. It <laughs> this chair is so familiar. Oh. Yeah. Are these the chairs? Okay, <laughs> all right. Wait, it's not. not. <laughs> That's so funny. But okay. it feels like it. And you guys also, so High Note is your podcast by yourself. Yes. But you've had guests on, Steph Curry, yeah. Derek Carr, lots of what, yeah. little names. Athletes yeah. of all things, athletes and coaches, yeah. uh, which I did not really expect. But there is so much overlap with the sports world and the music world. Mm. And so it's been really cool to get to know a lot of different people and just amazing perspective and advice on life. Yeah. Oh, it's really, amazing. really helped me a lot. Wow. Okay, Lorna, would you please give us kind of the, the heartbeat of, of Alive and Wells? Because I love that we're getting to see both of you. Yes. And you guys are tackling some pretty incredible subjects over on that podcast. Yes. Yeah, so our whole goal is to just let people know they're not alone mm. in parenting, in marriage, in life. You're not alone. Like, we're going through it, and we're giving you, like, a view into the depths of our mess. Mm -hmm. And we'll tell you, like, what we've learned along the way. We don't have it all figured out, but hopefully something that we say resonates with you, and it can help you as you parent or as you're a single person or as you're going into marriage or any of these things that we talk about. So that's pretty much the heart of that. Love it. It's so helpful. I think for people to know that you can be living life and not know all the answers and not have it all oh together, gosh. but still be seeking God first and loving each other and live, doing your very best. I think that sometimes it can be intimidating when you hear from someone who's like, oh, and this, 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 this is, and that's one thing I love so much also about the back porch, back porch theolo theology, <laughs> theology is that it just... It, all of this high, seemingly high information, mm -hmm. like, is just so easily accessible. Yes. And um, you guys just make it so sweet. And you've been married 11 years. That's right. right. Going and on 12 in January. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's amazing. Disciples dozen. Yeah. <laughs> and you have four sweet boys. Yes. And you just let people in. Four boys all mess. under the age of nine. Yeah, so, it's true. And it's you guys wild. let us into the chaos that that brings with it. <laughs> Being the only uh, sorority sister in an entire frat house is <laughs> yes. your life. It is me. Yeah. <laughs> we love it, though. The boys are incredible. I mean, they're the catalyst for a lot of our conversations because so much of our life revolves around our kids at this point. Uh, we've got a nine-year-old, a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and an 18-month-old. Wow. And You're they are all unbelievable <laughs> yeah. in the best ways and, and all the of the worst. ways that are being and developed. Let's be real. <laughs> Let's so be real. Kind. The worst ways. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, a work in process. Uh, but okay, so married 11 years, four kids, all the things. I mean, 
from turning on TV and seeing you on top of the Macy's Day Parade float, Cracker Barrel float going by singing to yes. next time Good Morning America and tours and, and you guys are very active in your local church as mm. well. So I mean, just so many, you have your hands in so many different things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so before we ask the next question, which is, I'm just gonna spoiler alert for you, is uh, you know, what does it look like to prioritize your marriage in the midst of so many great opportunities mm. that could take you away from it? Good. Uh, but first, Lorna, since we got to spend so much time getting to know your husband uh, in the last episode when he was on, could you just give us what's on the what's on the Lorna Wells baseball card if we flip it over? Like what mm. a little bit of your kind of upbringing, how you came to know Jesus, uh, all of that. Yeah, so I was raised in a pastor's home, a uh, Pentecostal pastor's home in Houston, Texas. Woo! Yeah, H-Town. Astro! <laughs> yeah. And don't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was raised in a pastor's home, grew up um, singing in my church, things like that, and uh, went to Bible college, which is where I met my husband in Ooh. Indiana. And came back to my dad's church. I was the worship pastor for 10 years and did that whole thing and um, married my husband during that time and then became a mom and had a major life transition where I became a stay-at-home mom. Mm. And that was really different for me and a challenge. I talk a lot about that in the podcast. But our first episode is called Grammys and Sweatpants. So it's all about how I have a husband who's uh, being nominated for Grammys and I'm at home in my sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a big contrast. But wow. I feel like that is most people's lives and the contrast and different seasons that we go through. We may not always be in the same season in our marriage hmm. individually. And so how do we navigate that and how do, how do we work through that is a big part of our everyday discussions. But that's me. Wow. wow. How old were you guys when you got married? I was 24. <laughs> and she I was... 25. 25? Oh! She's older than me. <laughs> Talk nice. <laughs> got a I'm woman. older than Levi, Cougar. too. Cougar uh -huh. alert. Yep. Uh-huh. She's just... She's older than me. <laughs> so Is it like half the year? Jenny's older than me half the year, and I don't yes. let her forget it. Ever. Exactly. exactly. Six yeah. months like, different. Like, do you want me to yeah. talk louder into your good ear? Yeah. <laughs> she loves yes. that. I don't know why. Yes. She just loves that. I'm like, babe, aren't you excited to be 40? She's like, I'm not even close to 40, and you'll be 40 with me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm closer to 30. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Do you, I do? I'm curious. What do you guys, uh, if it's uh, if it's appropriate, uh, is is in uh, your phones when each other calls? What words come up on the oh. screen? Oh. <clears throat> I call her LB because I have a sister named Brittany. So when we were going to school together, we were just friends. Calling her Brittany was fine. Okay. Little backstory. They don't know that I went by Brittany. Oh, that's true. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of important to yeah, the story. The context, uh-huh, <laughs> ain't nobody in this church. Uh, her middle name is Brittany, and she was raised being called Brittany. Oh. But when we were dating, I was like, I can't call you my sister's name. <laughs> it's just not going to work. So I started calling her Lorna, and then, and then I LB. abbreviated it because I'm a nickname guy to LB, so yes, LB. Yes, and I call him Tori, so just kind of So when, you're, when, his, when your phone rings, it says Tori. Yeah. That's he's calling. Which is really cool because my grandmother that actually passed when I was young called me Tori. Okay. And she never knew that. Mm -hmm. yeah. She just started calling me Tori, which is better than her Bible school nickname for me, which was Toe. I'm like, no, <laughs> Toe's not going to work. <laughs> like, hey, that's disgusting. <laughs> okay, so... Um, does your family still call you Brittany then? They or do. You, oh, okay. Most people, anyone who knew me before college um, usually call me Brittany. Huh. So anyone after college calls me Lorna. So anyone I've met after college, yeah. Wow. But Lorna is such a beautiful name. Yeah. What I mean, it, Brit Brittany's mean, a beautiful Lorna? name too. Um, my mom got it from a classic story, Lorna Dune. Maybe you've heard of the cookies, <laughs> but yes. it's from a classic love story. And she read it when she was a kid and said she wanted to name her daughter that. So that's cool. So cool. you met in college. How exactly did you meet in college? <laughs> <laughs> Not the whole story. Okay. Just an excerpt. You don't have the time for this sitcom. 
Um, let me see. I remember the moment that I saw her for the first time. She, I was in one of the practice rooms in the Bible college. Uh, I was a theology major, music minor, uh, obviously, a lot of emphasis on the music. And I was in one of the classrooms playing piano and stuff, and it was the first week of school. And she and a few of her friends came in the classroom, and she was wearing a, a, a pink shirt and a, and a denim skirt. And uh, she was like, oh, you play piano. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I do, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And uh, so she sang, and I sang a little bit, and our friends sang or whatever, and then she went off with all of her popular friends, and I just was in the music room on a Friday night by myself. But um, God does things in isolation. But that's when we first met, and then we actually were in a singing group together in the school. She went to the music school on a vocal scholarship. I begged to get into the school. Didn't make it into the group the first year. I didn't um, win the audition for the group. And then the next year I got in the group and we were traveling around together. And Let me give you guys a hint. Go to YouTube. No! Oh! And go to Indiana Bible College Torn Wells. Oh my and God. you will see. We need your book. All over <laughs> the marriage it. devotional book. All over it. It's about to the be the improvement of singing. Um, he was wow. always good, but he's like That's amazing cap. now. So wow. love that. That's oh so my beautiful. Gosh. <laughs> okay, so before we back up and go back to you know when you were dating, engaged, and single uh, before that, uh, what would you say? You know, in the midst of all that God's done, I'm sure more than I'm sure to quote you exceedingly, God of abundantly, mm -hmm. more than you guys could have asked or thought. I'm oh. sure 11 years ago you weren't. He didn't have even the wildest imagination of what God had in his heart for your family mm. that both of you have your hand in, yeah. both in kids and in impact and all the things. So what has that journey looked like of prioritizing the marriage in the... Yeah, to, yes, do, do bless her. Because we would hate for her soul to leave her body accidentally. Yes. <laughs> she literally just died for a millisecond. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we can't let that happen. Keep that soul in the body, honey. Yes. Bless you. Thanks. Uh, I love a little paganism just sprinkled in. <laughs> I mean, it's the holidays. <laughs> yes. Wow. So what does it look like to prioritize your marriage in the midst of all that you guys are doing? I think one thing is keeping our connection and conversation going. It's really important. Uh, I am not so much of a verbal processor as she is. Um, I think women have the unique and innate ability to communicate in an ongoing <laughs> fashion. Which, let me say that we just now got language for this with our counselor because um, he was calling it complaining. <laughs> and I said, no. Wow, all right. <laughs> I just have to say how I'm feeling out loud. Yes. So then it's like, oh, okay, well, I got that out. I'm good. Mm -hmm. But he's like, why are you complaining so much? And then our counselor was like, well, she's not complaining. She's a verbal processor. Oh. And I'm like, see? Well, let's process positively. <laughs> <laughs> That's helpful, though. That's so helpful to have words. It's yeah. true. Yes. And knowing your differences, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. It helped me a lot. I, I'm, I talk about this a lot on Alive and Wells, but I'm on a journey of just growing in empathy period. I think just some of the things I went through as a kid made me push back from the pain of others because I wasn't ready to deal with my own. And so entering into the pain of other people is uh, very scary. Mm. And so we have grown in that in our relationship of me trying to learn how to lean in uh, to actually listen. But I think keeping the connection alive is important. And like date nights, we do occasionally. occasionally. Um, I feel like some of that is seasonal sometimes. Yeah. But what we have done well is just always talking. Mm. And she's always like, oh, I love seeing your eyes. And that's a hint that I've been on my phone too much. <laughs> wow, I just love looking into your eyes. Oh. 
but looking into each other's eyes, having conversation, what's happening in your heart, asking questions, not getting lazy and assuming knowledge, but probing, not just how was your day, but how did that feel? Why do you think that is? Where is that coming from? Mm. Those types of things, I think, keep us connected on a conversational level. But there's another thing that keeps us very connected. <laughs> it's the thing that's... What is that? <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> Nintendo. That's good. <laughs> Nintendo. Nintendo <laughs> 64. <laughs> I was going to say that is true, yes. But I was also going to say we laugh a lot together. Yes. Mm. And we make fun of each other, which you will also hear on our podcast. Yes. It's usually me making fun of Torin, but mm -hmm. we we like to make fun of each other. Should we tell them like what we say to each other? No, we shouldn't. <laughs> of course This is, you hey, should. it's the Lust Coast. <laughs> We're no. here for it. We don't want the explicit taste. warning coming up on your podcast. We use the phrase K and B. We use the letters a lot of times around our kids, but really it just means kiss my butt. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever we're being rude to each other, we just say kiss my butt. Yes. And it's, it makes us laugh, especially if we're in an argument. We'll just start laughing in the arguments you over. You gotta find things that break tension. Yes. Yeah. Cause like at the level that she is scheduling our home and managing things and the stuff that I'm trying to manage, there is a constant tension that mm. rests in work life and ministry life, kids and all of that. You've gotta have some things that immediately just break tension so for us kiss my butt <laughs> you know what it, and that. they're gonna figure it out one day that's they gonna be the real absolutely. downfall they're gonna absolutely. crack that it's like when spelling around your kids doesn't work anymore like ah oh, damn yes. why do you learn how to read right <laughs> i wanted to be like s-e-x <laughs> and, and, and yeah exactly i did tell torn that i can't wait for the day that i can say it to my boys yeah just tell them to kiss my butt when they're having joke. attitude yeah, yeah it'll be i think joke. i'm convinced inside jokes are one of the lifebloods of a good marriage absolutely a good relationship and just having that familiarity and it almost becomes like like even a word to remind yourself okay hold on a second let's 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 yes. let's dottle this down for a second yes. let's de-escalate um so lauren is there anything you would add to that just some of the things that have maybe some hacks or some things like this has been really helpful i mean torn's off on a bus tour you know off here what like how how do you keep that uh, connection going when you're by proximity alone. I mean, maybe not everyone listening is gonna experience that, but you know, firefighters and uh, deployed overseas, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. that would keep them you know, physically away from each other. Mm -hmm. um, throughout our marriage, we've done different things. Sometimes we've watched shows together, like over the phone, which is cheesy, but mm -hmm. we've done that before, like a show that we love watching together. And so we'll go for weeks without watching it because we've been apart and it'll be like, hey, let's just turn it on. Okay, one, two, three, go yeah. well, and start fun. it. Yeah. Watch the show. That way we can talk about it while we're watching it. Um, Going out to eat, like I'll just go by myself, turn on FaceTime yeah. and eat and talk. and hmm. you know. We just talk a lot like he said though and one thing that we used to do and we haven't done this in a while but it was marco polo mm -hmm. and that's just like where you send video messages if you don't know what that is and it would every time he would get to the airport when he was leaving he would send me a marco and so i would get it and you know i would reply back and it was just kind of like our thing so. i think doing stuff together like we just went to a conference together, you know, the two of us are with friends or carving out time just to get away from other things. It can be a night, it can be three days, whatever that is, to just sit down with each other and hang out. Maybe it was last night, we just sat on the couch and just talked. I mean, I think sometimes we want complicated answers because it keeps us in a place of not doing anything. Mm, mm -hmm. So if it's unattainable, then I don't have to put any action behind it. Yeah. It's too lofty of an ideal. But when it's something just so easy, like sit down and shut the TV off, you know, or turn the TV on and just laugh. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think those little things are just easy. You know, That's good. I love that. Beautiful. Shifting gears <laughs> here, we've been talking so much about marriage in this theme that we've been on. Uh, we wanted today to just at least go back to some of the, the years before you were married. For those listening who are like, hey, this doesn't apply to me, I'm not married, thanks a lot uh, for rubbing that in my face. Uh, <laughs> Valentine's Day is coming up, so that's going to be great. Uh, but but mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, 
what were some things you guys did in your single years that you're thankful for now? Uh, that, that maybe prepared you for marriage or mm -hmm. just anything about that season of life that you're, you look back on and you're like, man, I'm really grateful for X, Y, Z. It's yeah. good. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I wish I would have done. <laughs> and maybe we can do that list next. But I think one thing for me was hustling, like working hard and learning different skills and stuff. My, the, the job that I got at her home church that her dad pastored in Houston was an internship for graphic design. So that's where I started making mailers and graphics for series and eventually was the creative director there working with cameras and all that. But I built those skills as a single person and there is the benefit in a lot of ways of time uh, if, if it's stewarded well where you can really develop skills, hustle, uh, get into a place by yourself. I mean, going up to my church, this is going back before I was working at her church, but I got the church key and I would go up there and pray and read the word and write songs and try to hone the, the songwriting craft and wow. got out there with my band and got in a van and you know pursued the thing that we felt like God was calling us to like using, not wasting that season, like when I get married, when I find my spouse, then my life will begin, mm -hmm. when the person completes me, like trying to find that active space right now, wherever you're at. Uh, That's be good. Because, I mean, maybe you find a spouse and maybe you don't, like don't waste the years. There's purpose, calling, intentionality, and a God-given design for your life. Uh, so don't waste it waiting. Uh, so I'd say that diving into something that you, you really care about. I read lots of books. Um, I was trying to become a, a great leader. I started that in high school, working through Maxwell books. I had a mentor that would walk me through chapter by chapter Maxwell books. Um, just anything I could do to build the performance side of what I felt called to do. What I wish I would have done was spent more time developing the character side of what I felt called to do. We can talk about that later. But, um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's good. I would say that um, I prayed a lot. <laughs> um, I developed a prayer life pretty early. There was this lady in our church, and she was always praying in the prayer room before service. And I would go in there and I would kneel down beside her and wow. she would pray and speak in tongues. And I would, I would just sit beside her and I would just listen and I learned. Wow. And so I, I just prayed a lot as a young person. And then I, the best thing I ever did is I wrote in my journal exactly what I wanted in a husband. I mean, every detail, I wrote it down. And after we got married, I actually found that and I looked I was like, oh my gosh, this is you. There was one thing that wasn't, because I wrote tall, dark, and handsome. So. Hey, five nine ain't bad though. <laughs> five nine ain't bad. I put my boots on. I got five ten. <laughs> Hey, two out of three ain't bad. Hey, no, you know. and, and how can God do what you want unless you ask him? Love so it. if there's specifics you want in a spouse, write it down exactly what you want and then become the person that is deserving of that person Ooh. that you desire wow. so wise so good love she's that she's so good so and her good. prayer life i feel like has been the single most important part of our relationship wow like if if she didn't learn in those years to pray and get close to God and yield to God and surrender to his voice, then I think we'd be in a totally different place now. Because wow. there have been so many times when the, the tensions have been high, when we're just against each other for various reasons and ultimately no reason, where she gets alone with God and comes back and it's like, that has to be the Lord. You're not that good. <laughs> Usually I have a bad attitude and I have to go pray through it to come but back. It's, it's an amazing, it's that prayer perspective has served our marriage so well. Amazing. Yeah. So good. Now what would you say, um, 
is one of the hardest things that you guys have walked through and how, how you walked through it together and maybe something that you learned through it. How many things do you <laughs> want to talk about? Um, I mean, we could talk about the beginning of our marriage when people were sending our wedding invitations back uh, because they didn't think black people and white people should be married together. Wow. Uh, people we were serving in the church, people she grew up with, in that same first year, her dad was diagnosed with leukemia. Mm. Her family went through a huge thing. The, the church split over us getting married, and wow. my parents were getting the invitations back, and they were trying to shield us from that, but we were hearing things, and mm. um, it, was, it was a struggle. It so was sorry. tough, and didn't know how to handle it. You know, mm -hmm. 24, I remember, 25. I remember one night I was crying and didn't know if my dad was going to live. I um, went in my closet and just laid on the floor and cried. And he never came in. He didn't know what to do. I mean, he didn't know how to handle that. And so I just was alone in it. And I mean, thinking about that Terrible. now, you would never let that happen now. But it was just so difficult for both of us to figure out how to navigate that. Um, but on a good note, my dad was healed of leukemia, and yeah. he's amazing. Praise God. So. Praise God. And all the family that left the church when we got married has now returned to the church. So. And, and yeah, we're, the relationships have been healed in, mm. in a lot of ways. Just amazing restoration story. There's a lot more detail in that, but... That was the beginning of our marriage. Yeah, wow. then about then year six hit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is where I, I was mentioning, I wish that I would have had the awareness to work more on the character side because, man, gifts are amazing and opportunity is incredible, but if you don't know how to handle the pressure of the good things God gives you, the weight can deteriorate the, the fabric of your soul and your Dang. your discipline and whatever it is that you think that you've got going on. So year six, we talk about this on the High Note podcast. It's the season finale of season one. You can go listen to it. We talk about it more on Alive and Wells, but me walking out of a struggle with pornography, um, I was exposed to that when I was really, really little, five years old, oh. and uh, just had a grip, not in the early years of my life, but it was a seed that was planted that I knew I could go back to when things got difficult. Mm. And that was, that was my out, my escape. And, you know, there was a moment when that was revealed, and we went and we fought hell. I mean, just straight up. I mean, um, when I talk about Lorna's prayer life, we were just trying to work through it all, processing it. She's completely overwhelmed with this information. This guy that she thought had no imperfections. Um, and I, I say that and it sounds funny, but she really thought I was perfect. I really did. Um, and I think it's possible. You want to talk about that? What? The source. and Yeah. Yeah. Right now? <laughs> that seems like a good time. Bring it. We're all here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> fighting to stay above the surface. It'd Thanks for good. sharing that, Torin. No, in yeah. Enneagram 3, it's not easy for him to share those things, and I was super Well, proud I want to get to the point where you're praying, yes. but I need you to say why it matters so much. Why it's so... Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say. So <laughs> she communication is usually key, guys. in this moment she does an amazing job talking about how she had made me the source. Yes, I was just waiting till you got done. I didn't know you were and had this idea of me that all fell down in a moment. Yes, but in that moment, instead of responding like. I hate you, you're disgusting, get out of here. Because I've been in plenty of churches that made me feel like that. Mm -hmm. And felt like it was insurmountable and that Jesus wasn't big enough to pull me out of it because I was such a sicko. But she said, 
the enemy's not going to take your life, our home, our ministry, or our family. Come on. She laid hands on me. Wow. And we wept and cried and spoke in tongues, and God moved into the room and miraculously broke a stronghold. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. And then we went into the hard work mm-hmm. of counseling and going deeper than the moment of the thing being broken, but mm. the thing being carried away. Yes. Wow. And, uh, and Beautiful. the whole thing that God was working in both of us is what Torin was saying, is that it's so easy to look at your spouse as your source or yeah. your children as your source, but they are a resource that God can use. Beautiful. It's a vehicle for God's grace and love, like Say you guys that. said. But my husband is not my source. He's not my source of joy. He's not my source of strength. God is. Yeah. And I had made him an idol in my life. Um, we look at when we talk about idols and all we can imagine is like this statue that we're worshiping, but it can be your spouse. And I had made an, him an idol in my life where I had placed him above God. I was going to him for all of the things that I needed to be going to God for. And he's a jealous God. Mm. And I'm not saying he caused that to happen in our marriage, but he allowed it to happen to make us better. I would, it's weird for me to say this, but I would not change a thing because of who we are now Mm. and our relationship. We are so close and God has healed the broken places in our lives and restored that through our marriage. It's miraculous. Beautiful. Well, thank, thank you. you. Guys. Praise thank God. You. And thank you for the encouragement that, that vulnerability yeah. is to every single person listening who feels like, I don't know if we're going to be able to make it through this. Yeah. And to say, not only can they, <coughs> because of our good God, but they could come to a place where they would say, I wouldn't change yeah. a thing about the hardest moment of your marriage so praise god yeah. for that yes, yes. thank god Honestly. we uh have so much respect for you guys yeah, we and love you, love you. uh love torn you your guys. newest record joy in the morning is phenomenal thank you uh, alive and wells is amazing and i know you labor especially hard on that mm. he adds the color he's the, yes. the, the, the uh, whoa 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 i'm whoa. just kidding <laughs> i'm shine. wearing red pants <laughs> yeah 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 the red Merry pants. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, oh, I mean. I add the flavor. I can, tell, flavor. I can tell a lot of the structure for that podcast comes from you. Yes. And, and he's adding one-liners and funny moments and obviously a lot of great content as well. But I can tell that podcast is, am I right? That is true. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the one. He's the three. Yeah. There yeah. Go. What She's numbers so- are all? Three. Three and nine. Nine. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Very good. But uh, and the high note is fabulous as well. Thank so you. We want to just take a moment and honor you. Thank you for coming on yes, today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, we, thank you for sharing. Thank you Love you. And we have a few minutes left. We wanted to uh, ask some answer some questions. So uh, we'll let uh, the Wells hit this. And we're starting off with uh, we're struggling to find couples community. I like the guy. She doesn't connect with the girl, or the girl is her long lost friend, and the guy thinks I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh, this is one of those situations where you go hang out with another couple yeah. Yeah. and you get in the car afterwards, and either one or the other, it's like, oh my gosh, she was just so amazing. I can't believe, like, we have the same yeah. oval nails. Yeah. We're like, oh, da, da. and I'm like, oh. Um, I mean, oh the guy... He was dull. Was, <laughs> I mean, I've met Wood that's more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's not going to be in my inner circle. That type of thing. So yeah, what do you do? Because that's real and that's tough. It's real. Yeah. You know what I love is actually the fact that although we are one, that we're still also individuals. Yeah. And we get to have friends. You know, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a couple hang every time. Y'all go get breakfast. Yeah. Y'all go get Manny yeah. Petty. Yeah. I'm going to call my friend yeah. that I like. My, I'm going to call my friend <laughs> being alone. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to go do something, you know, I enjoy doing. And I think that's okay. And we've actually encouraged each other in our friendships 
because so we realized this in some of the counseling work that we did, that we were very heavily dependent on one another. It'd be like, well, who are you talking to about this? Each other. Uh, where are you going to uh, ourselves? <laughs> we were just very isolated as a couple. And we've realized that God has put the people that we need in our lives if we have eyes to see them. And that that's what we've done. So sometimes LB will hit me up and be like, hey, you should go do this with so-and-so. And it's like, awesome. Or, or vice versa. Yeah. You know. That's, that's awesome. a great answer. Jenny, that's how would you great. add on to that? That's so good. I, um, I, I don't know. What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think... I'm usually concerned that I, I'm the one that, they don't, that the a couple doesn't want to <laughs> hang out with. Whatever. <laughs> that's impossible. Yeah. yeah, everyone finds Jenny so unlikable. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. Oh, it's exactly how we think about you. No, um, I think just You're because... the only reason why we tolerate <laughs> Levi. <laughs> no, Been saying I it for just, years. I usually feel like I'm not on the same. Like, I don't know a lot about politics. I don't know a lot about That's a lot of, of things. That's one of the best things and about great. you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Who, who was running this Yeah, time? right. What? Well, yeah. Tell me more. I love Sorry, to run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm saying, no, but Jenny, when we have a couple we don't find super compatible, but one of us really likes some of the couple. Yeah. That is attention. I think it is. I think something that I've had to learn is that it's okay. Like, because in my mind, I'm like, I love my friend. She's amazing. Her husband's awesome. We get together as and go to dinner, and it's not the same. And I think for me to not feel hurt, like, oh, man, like, now this is awkward, or now they're going to ask us to go to dinner, and we're, we're going to say no. Yeah. And it's like, how do I deal with that? And I think just knowing that that's okay, and that and you can navigate that, and you can tell your friend, hey, let's go to breakfast. Let's go yeah. hang out. Let's go on a run. Let's go do something. And not make, not have to make excuses like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, my husband doesn't like your sh- husband." Yeah. But just, just being okay with your friendship with your friend, I think but that's do okay. Do pray because it is a gift that God can and will give you yes. a couple and that you do are, have. Yeah, and Absolutely. I think that that is a yeah. yeah, that is a gift. All right, Jenny, let's read the next question. Um, All right, old lady, I'll read it. Can I ask you a the question? The lights are in my eyes. Before you answer this, do you run with your friends for fun? <laughs> This is a real thing. Okay, well, I ran my first half marathon this year. Actually, my Modern only 40th half marathon. Birthday. She for my 40th. Marathon. That's fire. I did fire. turn 40, and 40 is awesome. That's amazing. Um, but I had a friend. Great. It is amazing. I had a friend. I have a friend who's run like multiple marathons and Iron Woman's and everything, and she was so sweet to like help me train. That's dope. And so, actually, like, she's actually one of my friends that I I really love and God's brought into my life. But we do actually. I love well, that. Well, not anymore. Levi actually runs more than me now, but okay. that's I run, okay. I run after her. <laughs> just just very her. Good. I started running Aww. just to spend time with her. She was running so much training for the stupid marathon thing that I would like to, half, to literally half <laughs> to literally see you. I had to run, uh, but anyhow. I love it, that. But that is fun running together, me and you. Running together is amazing. I'd die. The Torin only runs if he's chasing the ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big walker. Yeah, I heard that's that if good. you walk uphill on an incline you burn more fat than running so i've been in there on that i've turned on an access more podcast get my little (laughs) walk on get my little burn going yeah get my little sweat on do you guys have like a favorite like uh activity you like to do together that like recreationally yes we do say it on the count of three one two three walk (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna say spin class Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I hate spin class. He hates class. it. He hates it. We it's need just... to go to spin class together. Oh, gosh. Okay, you guys go to spin class together. We can go walk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I love walking. All right. So what, what was the one you were going to say? Because that's obviously a joke. That's he, he not it. it. Yeah. We burn muscle. I don't want to yeah. do that. I was, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to tap out on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We'll read the question. It says, <laughs> right. when considering marrying someone, uh, an objectively wonderful human who loves Jesus, and a part of you feels doubt slash uncertainty of this being the person God wants you with, how do you discern between God's purpose Jesus. or the devil trying to sneak in? Seep. Seep. Seep in. It's a very long question. <laughs> 
Got a Man, question. You guys, they asked I, that to the wrong question, podcast. That's a back to worse theology <laughs> question. <laughs> Come well, you back need to ask up us here. like what the brand of cold plunge we use is yes. or something e- easier. No, but what would you say? I would say number one, faith. Are you aligned in your faith, values, mission, assignment? Like, is there a congruence around what God has called the Good. the two of you to do? Good. Two, family. How does your family feel about them? Mm. Um, especially if your family, you would say you have confidence and trust in as godly individuals who make decent choices. Yeah. Um, what, do they like them? Are they for it? And then three, I would say friends. Yep. How do your friends feel about them? What, what, what's their insight? Yeah, that's good. I, good. I think one of the things that's always marked uh, how we look at marriage choices is would you consider it an honor to suffer with that person? Ooh, I've people, heard you say that. People get married for better and for richer and for health. And yeah. they forget about the other half of the vows. Right. And so, you know, would it be an honor to hold their hair back uh, while they're puking during their chemo treatments? Would it be a joy to sit with them and move their wheelchair around the room? Would it? Would you? Would you stand and weep with them in a graveyard and be grateful to do so? Yeah. You know, can you picture yourself suffering with that person? If so, okay. don't pass go, man. Yes. Marry that person tomorrow. That's, That's fire. So good. That's good. Yeah. And having the perspective of that before you go into it. Yes. I think like so many of us get married in in ignorance you know you don't even at 20 or 24 barring some life experiences what how hard can life get you know and uh having that perspective is huge yeah well, to, to get it's, to get it's like people say i know this person's wrong for me i know this and this, 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 but they're hot it's like so is hell you know what i'm yeah. saying it's like, that can't be that can't be the yeah, thing that's you know not the no test. all right these are good questions you guys are even better guests come on let's hear it for the wells thanks for being a part of thank hey, so you. let's go thank you love you guys Thank you so much for listening. And be sure to swing by levilusco.com to see what's going on in our world and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. In the meantime, we would love to connect with you on social media. Jenny and Levi Lusco, out. Out.